Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, God Talked with Abraham, Dr. McLuhan offers insights on why Abraham was called a friend of God. I can't think of a greater compliment that could be paid to a person than to be called a friend of God. James, the earthly brother of Jesus, wrote, the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness and he was called a friend of God. What an amazing statement. God had such a close relationship with Abraham that he called him his friend. The life of Abraham is proof that God wants to have a close relationship with those who follow him. For more than 30 years, I've been following the footsteps of Abraham, trying to visit the places where he pitched his tents and he met with God. There are few places that are more meaningful to me than visiting the Oaks of Mamre just outside the ancient city of Hebron. This is where God visited with Abraham and ate a meal with him. We read in Genesis, the Lord appeared to Abraham by the Oaks of Mamre, and he sat at the tent, the door of his tent, in the heat of the day. That's a good place to be in the heat of the day in the Middle East. And there it is. God himself appeared to him. This was not the angel of Gabriel or the angel of the Lord who appeared to him. It was the Lord himself. And whenever you see the word L-O-R-D capitalized, a special meaning is attached to it. As we see in Genesis that we just read, that L-O-R-D capitalized appeared. The Lord is an Old Testament appearance of God, and it is referred into theology as a theo-godophony, an appearance of God. The Lord represents the four Hebrew letters, Y-H, uh, Y-H-W-H, without any vowels, and it is known as the tetragrammaton, the unsayable name of God. And Hebrew scholars think it should be pronounced as Yahweh, and then when we anglicize that, uh, we might say Jehovah, Jehovah God. The point is that, that Moses is making is not about the name and all of that and how to say it. It's that God spoke to Abraham. He appeared before him. And in that conversation, he made a most remarkable statement. He promised that one year after that visit, he and Sarah would finally have the son that they would call Isaac. Now, there's a lovely play on words in this part of the Bible because the Bible says both Abraham and Sarah laughed. Wouldn't you laugh if somebody said to you at 90 years old, one year from now, you're going to hold a child in your arms. <laughs> what would be the thought that went through your mind? And the play is that Isaac means son of laughter. And one of the things I love about God is that he knows how to bring surprises into our life and to make us laugh. And if you're facing some impossible situations right now, I invite you to laugh out loud and say with me, all things are possible with God. <clears throat> Just laugh at it. The devil hates it when we laugh at him <laughs> and when we put our trust in God. Now, before we move on, <clears throat> I want us to not miss that God, along with two angels, came with him and sat and talked with Abraham while his servants prepared a meal for him to eat. This is the most unusual text. We read further, O Lord, Abraham said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet. Can you imagine washing the feet of God? Rest yourself under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may eat and be refreshed yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. And so they said, do as you have said. Genesis chapter 3, 18, verse 3 through 5. <clears throat> God gave Abraham permission to prepare a meal for him. Abraham's servant prepared the bread. That means they made it. They needed it, the scripture tells us. They milked it, 
probably a, a, a goat, and then they went and slaughtered some fresh cut uh, calf and, and had meat that was prepared to serve the Lord. They didn't go to a refrigerator, and all of that took a significant amount of time. Marvel with me as you hear the story that the God of the universe stepped down for at least two hours. You don't eat in 30 minutes overseas anywhere. It's a drawn-out thing of enjoying fellowship. And there he was with two angels accompanying him for some unspecified period of time, but we might imagine at least two hours. Don't let anyone tell you that God does not have the ability to have a close relationship with you. And before we move to the most important experience Abraham had with God, here are some helpful things to know about. Abraham, or Abram, as he was early called, uh, was mentioned over 280 times in the Bible. The Arabic name for Abraham is Ibrahim, said with an I, pronounced with an E. Ibrahim is only mentioned 76 times in the Quran. And the Quran does not include the genealogies that connected the patriarchs and the kings and does not say in any specific way where Abraham went to sacrifice his son. The Bible clearly connects God's plan of salvation from Adam to Jesus, including Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The biblical record of Abraham's story is filled with the names of ancient places that can still be visited today. As I've mentioned, I've been to so many of them. Now, following Noah's flood, the descendants of Shem are traced all the way down to the birth of Terah, who is the father of Abraham. And so Abraham is in the line of God's plan to offer salvation to everyone. We read in Genesis chapter 12, the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country and from your kindred and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Now, the rest of the book of Genesis, all 32 chapters, are devoting to telling the remarkable story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham obeyed the Lord by traveling from Ur in Mesopotamia. He went first to Shechem, then down to Egypt, back to Canaan, and went wherever God sent him to go. We appreciate that the Bible does not portray Abraham as sinless, but rather as one whose faith brought him back to God whenever he sinned. He told half-truths and had moments of great doubt. He slept with his wife's maid, and a son was born out of the will of God called Ishmael. Nevertheless, God did not punish Ishmael for the sins of his father and blessed him as well. Now, Abraham fought in many physical battles, but none were as great as the spiritual test that he faced when God asked him to offer his son as a living sacrifice on Mount Moriah. Uh, the Bible has no ambiguity about the son Abraham was asked to offer. It was Isaac. Islamic scholars are divided about whether Abraham offered Isaac or Ishmael because the Quran does not specify the son by name. However, the standard Islamic narrative teaches that it was Ishmael and not Isaac. And Muslims believe that Abraham took Ishmael to Mecca and built the Kaaba. And one of the challenges with this view is that Mecca did not exist as a known place in Saudi Arabia until more than 100 years after the death of Muhammad. Its location is more than 1,000 miles or 1,600 kilometers from where Abraham was living at Shechem in Beersheba. And the Lord said to Abraham, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and there offer him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 2. Mount Moriah is well known 
It is where Abraham had earlier in his life met with Melchizedek. It is where the future city of Jerusalem was to be built, and it was where the temple was established. Now, while Abraham did not know God's purpose in making this request, Moses tells us clearly that God was testing Abraham. And God does have the right to test you and to test me. And some listening to this message today are facing a huge test that is breaking your heart. And we just want to say to you, it's a test. Trust God, he will see you through it. We invite you to put your faith in the one in whom Abraham trusted. And so Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And they cut wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place which God had told him to go. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 3. Now three days later, they arrived at the foot of Mount Moriah. Abraham said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I go with the boy over there and we will worship them, worship, and then we will come back to you. What a faith statement. Genesis 22 and verse 5. Now, Because Isaac had seen his father make many animal sacrifices over the years, he was confused by his dad's actions. So he asked probably one of the most difficult questions Abraham had ever been asked. My father, and he said, here am I, son. Isaac said to him, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Genesis chapter 22 and verse 7. Sometimes when children ask you penetrating deep questions, the only thing you can do is say, God, tell me what to say and give me an answer. And in a prophetic moment, an anointing came upon Abraham to say these words, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. And so they went on together, both of them. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 8. In this prophetic statement, we learn one of the most glorious names of God. He is the one who provides. He is Jehovah, as we sometimes say in English, Jehovah Jireh or Yahweh Yireh, the God who provides. Do what Abraham did. Place your faith in the Messiah, the one God sent to provide the ultimate payment for our sins. Ask Jesus to forgive you for all the sins that you have committed. Abraham built an altar. He laid the wood on the altar. He bound up his son and laid him on the wood. What a tender moment. He was about to strike him, but God reached down and grabbed his arm before he could hurt his son. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 12. I hope you feel the emotion. Can't even imagine how Abraham had such faith. <clears throat> Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 22, verse 12. What a relief. Just feel the tension lifting off of that mountain. He did not know that God was going to keep him from sacrificing his son. Abraham lived in radical obedience to God. And when Abraham looked around, he saw that God had placed a ram in the bush for him to sacrifice. And the ram became the substitute offering for Isaac. Now, a burnt offering is a special kind of offering. It's wholly given to God. All of it is burned was not a meal offering which was to be shared with people to eat some of the food. And so the innocent ram died for the sins of the one who was making the offering. And what Abraham prophesied to his son, God will provide a lamb, not a ram. And so the temporary solution was the ram but the permanent solution that Abraham prophesied about was the Lamb of God who would be wholly sacrificed for the sins of the world. And God praised Abraham for his faith by saying, seeing you have not withheld your son, 
your only son from me. Genesis chapter 22, verse 12. After embracing his son, that must have been such a warm embrace and lasting a long time, he sacrificed the ram. And Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As he said in this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Now, where is this place? It is, it is exactly where King Solomon built the temple. And the Holy of Holies was built over the rock where Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son. And once a year, the high priest would enter into that place on the Day of Atonement to sprinkle the blood from a perfect red heifer to pay for the sins of the people. And 2,000 years later, God actually did what he asked Abraham to do. And early in the ministry of Jesus, as he sat with one of the top officials, a man by the name of Nicodemus, he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Now from the cross, Jesus passed through the Holy of Holies in Jerusalem. You remember the curtain was split. Jesus passed through it on his way to heaven where Hebrews says Christ came as a high priest of the good things that are already there in heaven. He went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not the one on earth, but the one in heaven, not made with man's hands. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves. He entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, having obtained Eternal redemption, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 through 12. Abraham invites you today to place your faith in what Jesus did for you on the cross. With his own blood, he purchased our redemption. In Hebrews, we read, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was in, in the act of offering his only son, he considered that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead, which figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. He was as good as dead to his father, but God spared his life. Hebrews chapter 11, 17 and 19. God did not spare his son, but he freely gave him. Through believing what Jesus did for you on the cross, you can have a close relationship with God. You too can be raised from the dead and be assured of being in the presence of God. You can become a friend of God and hear his voice speak to you. The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Ask God to open your eyes, the eyes of your heart, to see what Jesus did for you on the cross. Abraham did not count on his good deeds to save his family. He became righteous while he was still alive by putting his faith in God's coming provision for sin. Abraham invites you to receive Jesus as your savior right now. You just felt the presence of Jesus coming upon you and entering into your heart, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for your incredible love, your passion, your, your sacrifice, a sacrifice for us. Lord, we thank you. We put our faith in you. We give you the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people.
Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.